Welcome to this worship experience. I'm Dawn Hauser, the chairperson for the Committee on Native American Ministries of the United Methodist Church in the Minnesota Annual Conference, or we are better known as CONAM. Leading this service today are several members of CONAM. April 18th is set apart as a special asking Sunday for Native American ministries. The special offering received is used to raise up Native American leaders within the United Methodist Church. The money received through this special offering assists Native American pastors in attending seminary and course of study so they can grow the kingdom of God within their own context. Last year, $273,741 was raised during this special Sunday. We would like to say thank you to you for your donations. All of the funds received are administered by the General Board of Higher Education and Ministries and the General Board of Global Ministries. It is our prayer that the Creator would speak to you through this worship experience. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first began. Today we're smudging, and I'm gonna do a little prayer in Ojibwe. Nungum gichi mi gwechwe ana gichi mana do. Gimi gwechewe o o ma aki. Gimi gwechewe eja akina ai mi kuwadze e iu ginawen gi minadwag. Ginawen mi gwechwe dam nijians minawa in wemagan. Ginawen akina mi gwech zagai idwen a take o deag a home mi gwech gichi mana do. So what I was saying is. Today we give thanks to the Creator. We give thanks to be here on this earth. We give thanks to all things beautiful that we have been given. We are thankful for our friends and our, and our relatives, and we thank you for the love in our hearts. In our gathering for this time of worship, we ask, Gracious Creator, bless us from the east with the winds that bring and renew life. O oh, Great Spirit, bless us from the south with the warm, wet winds that invite growth. Wankan Tonkan, bless us from the west with the cool winds that help to center our emotions and our passions. O oh, Holy One, bless us from the north with the winds that lead us to wisdom as from this life to the next. Creator, Great Spirit, Wankantaka, O oh, Holy One, fill the sky so that we might sense your presence and bless us from Mother Earth from which we have come. Restore us as we center our life in you. Aho.
The great father above is a shepherd chief. I am his, and with him I want not. He throws out to me a rope, and the name of the rope is love. And he draws me to where the grass is green, and the water is not dangerous. And I eat, and lie down, and am satisfied. Sometimes my heart is very weak and falls down, but he lifts me up and draws me into a good road. His name is wonderful. Sometimes it may be very soon, it may be a long, long time, he will draw me into a valley. It is dark there, but I will not be afraid, for it is between those mountains that the shepherd Christ will meet me, and the hunger that I have in my heart all through this life will be satisfied. He gives me a staff to lean upon. He spreads a table before me with all kinds of food. He puts his hand upon my head and all the tired is gone. He, my cup he fills till it runs over. What I tell is true, I lie not. These roads are a way ahead, will stay with me through this life and afterwards. And after, I will go to live in the great house and sit down with the shepherd chief forever. Our New Testament reading is from the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Hi, my name is Danny Owen, and I am the coordinator of Children, Youth, and Family Ministries at Aiken United Methodist Church. I'm also Anishinaabe, and I've been asked to share with you a story today for Native American Sunday. I've chosen to share with you the legend of the Lady Slipper. This book is written by Lisa Long Larson and Margie Preuse. I'm going to read the foreword from this book to you. After the snow has melted in the northern forest, you may chance upon graceful flowers shaped like little moccasins. Some are yellow and some are white. Some are pink and some are both pink and white. All are lady slippers, the most rare and precious flowers of the north. This delicate plant grows from soggy ground of a black spruce bog or the rocky soil of a jack pine forest. It takes 14 years before the first bloom appears. If left undisturbed, it will grow into a thick cluster of flowers, which will bloom for another 100 years or more. However, if any part of the lady slipper is picked, the entire plant dies. How did such a delicate flower come to grow in such rugged, rugged country? This Ojibwe legend will tell you. Once there was a little girl who lived with her mother and father, sister and brother, aunts and uncles and her cousins, her grandmas and her grandpas, all of her people lived in a village among the whispering pines. All of her family, of all of her family, her older brother was her very favorite. He was her favorite because he was strong as a bear, he was fast as a rabbit and smart as a fox because, because of these traits, he was the messenger for the entire village. When he went on his journeys, the little girl would beg him, please let me go with you. And he always said the same thing, maybe tomorrow. Then one day a terrible disease struck. The little girl watched as everyone, one by one, her people became sick. Her grandparents, her aunts, her uncles, her sister, her mother, even her dad got sick. A neighboring village had healing herbs that they needed. But the journey was so dangerous to make in the wintertime. It was too cold and the snow was too heavy 
and between the villages there was a deep dark lake and it was covered with ice Ugh. such journeys were not to be made during the winter time this was the time of the great spirit moon and yet her brother still said that he would make the trip but then he became ill too and now the little girl thought, oh gosh, I'm the only one that's left to go. And unless I go, everybody's going to just be sick and they're going to die. Maybe tomorrow, she said. And she looked at her brother and his face was bright red. He had a fever and she knew that she had to go right away. And so she put on her moccasins. They were beautiful moccasins. They were made of deer skin. And her mom had, had made them for her and she tucked in there some warm rabbit skin to keep her feet warm. So she slipped them on and she stepped out into a raging storm. And the trees were lashing about. There was snow blowing all over the place and the branches were falling and the snow was hitting her face and it was stinging. It almost hissed at her to be strong. So the girl, she bent down her head and she tucked in her robe and she stalked forward like a bear and it just was taking so long she plunged into the wind then she walked all day like that the wind and the snow was just blowing and at dusk she finally got to the lake and it was windswept the wind had blown the uh, the, the ice clean the the ice was slick and it was almost as if it was sleeping and on the far shore across the lake, she could see the wigwams were glowing from the other village. The little girl stepped onto the frozen lake and the ice shuddered and woke. It rumbled almost to say, go quickly. So the little girl ran like a rabbit. She was skittering and slipping. And when she reached the other side, all the people from the village came out to meet her. She told them her story, and when she finished, she saw their faces glowing with admiration. They were so happy because she was so brave. Then an old woman swept her up and carried her into a lodge. She fed the little girls. They had roasted venison and warm tea. She tucked her in with warm robes, and the girl was almost asleep when she remembered the medicines. The medicine, she murmured. We will bring you and the medicine to your people, the old woman said. Tomorrow, it's too dark and it's too cold to travel tonight. When the little girl closed her eyes, she could see the pale, sad, sick faces of her family, her friends, and her brother. And she knew that she had to leave right away. She got up quietly. She gathered up the medicine bundle and she crept out. The storm had stopped, thankfully. But now it was so cold and silent and the snow was just so deep. All she could hear was the popping and the crackling of the trees. Her eyes were stinging. She felt the frost gather on her cheeks. She pulled her robe really tight and she hurried across the lake. Blue and green lights were flickering in the sky above her. She knew the lights were spirits of the dead. They were dressed up in their fanciest clothes, rising and falling in the steps of a dance. Her people called them the Northern Lights. What if someone from her family or one of the people from her village had to join them because she was moving too slowly? She left the lake and quickened her pace, keeping her eyes on the sky above her. Suddenly, the snow collapsed around her and she was buried up to her arms. She kicked and punched and she was so angry because she needed to get free, but it was no use. She churned her little legs as fast as she could, as if to run out of the snow maybe? That only dug her in deeper. Above her, the dancing spirits were leaping and spinning. Maybe she would be the next one to be there with them. Oh, she fell back, she was exhausted. The snow around her almost seemed to be whispering, be wise. Yes, she must be smart like a fox and think her way out of this trap. She laid back because she was so tired to think and let the snow, she could feel the snow, it was relaxing its grip. She laid further back and let go a little more. Slowly, she wiggled and turned, paddled and swam her way out of the snow. Woohoo! 
Woo! She sang out. Her feet were free. But then, oh no, she cried. Her feet were bare and cold. Her moccasins were gone, buried deep in the drift of the snow. She dug in the snow, but it was too soft and too loose. She wiped her nose on her sleeve and she continued on barefoot. With the very first step, icy crystals were cutting into the flesh of her feet and they began to bleed. Every footprint had bright red drops of blood mingled with the white snow. Still, she stumbled ahead until dawn and when she reached the edge of her village, there she called out before sinking into the snow. The people from her village, even some of the sick ones, they ran out when they heard her. They carried her back to the lodge and wrapped her swollen and bleeding feet in the thick, warm deer skins. Because she had gotten the medicines, all of the people in her village were healed. The little girl, however, remained weak for a long, long time. But soon after the snow had all melted and spring was on its way, she recovered. When the forest turned green, she and her brother went out into the forest to search for her lost moccasins. They must still be there. And when they, and when, what they found when they got there filled them with wonder. On the very spot where she had lost her moccasins and wherever she had stepped with her bleeding feet, beautiful new flowers grew. They were pink and white and shaped just like little moccasins the little girl had worn on her journey. The Ojibwe people named the new flower the moccasin flower. It means moccasin flower. Today it's called the lady slipper. The people gave the little girl her name to its waone or little flower because although she was as strong as a bear, Fast as a rabbit and smart as a fox, she was also lovely and rare as a wild spring flower. Bonjour, I'm Dawn Hauser. I'm the pastor at Aiken United Methodist Church, and I'm also the chairperson for the Committee on Native American Ministries for the Minnesota Annual Conference. And I've been invited to to give the message this morning for this special day in, in the church's calendar for Native American Ministries Sunday. And, and so I am so blessed and so thankful to be with you today. Thank you for inviting us into to your congregation, into your home, into whatever space you might be worshiping in. We have such a special service that we're engaged in this morning. It is a service that is about how we are all part of God's family. I brought with me my hand drum, and my hand drum is especially important to me because the hand drum that we use in, in our culture is round, as you can see, and there's lots in, in our Native American culture that centers around the circle. The circle is an important part of our culture because we recognize and we realize that we all live within the circle. The circle is encompasses all living things, whether it be the blade of grass, the trees, the water, all of creation, including humanity, the birds and our winged friends, the snakes, the creepy crawlies, the, the four-legged animals. We are all part of God's creation. Our scripture this morning talks especially about how we as human beings are all welcomed into the family of God. And it starts off by telling us that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus into the world. And that's such an important part of who we are as disciples of Jesus Christ, no matter what our ethnic background is. Our, our ethnic background doesn't determine our humanity. Our ethnic background just determines how we live in the world. And so in, in our Native culture, we are very, very connected to the earth. We're very, very connected to one another. And, and this is how it is in our Christian faith, too. 
as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are all connected to one another. It is the love of from that came from from Jesus' sacrifice that connects each and every one of us. And it's so important that we remember that in the world that we're living in today. We are living in a world that is so deeply divided. Even amongst our Christian brothers and sisters, we find division. We find division fault lines along all kinds of different areas, whether it be the color of our skin, our ethnic differences, our where we live, how we live. Even in our Christian denominations, we're finding that there are deep, deep, deep divisions. This is not what God intended. God intended that we would live in harmony with one another, that we would love one another. The greatest commandment tells us that we are to love each other. It is so important in our Christian walk, in our discipling walk, that we follow the commandments to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Our scripture today, as I mentioned, reminds us that Jesus came into the world for each and every one of us. That means that Jesus came not just for me and not just for the people who sit in the pews on Sunday morning, but for all of humanity, regardless of where we were born, how we were born, what country we were born in, what color our skin is what ethnic background, who our parents were, none of that matters. We are all human beings, and God has called us each to live a life of integrity and faith here on this earth. You know, our drum makes a beautiful sound. reminds us in our native culture that we are all connected to the heartbeat of Mother Earth. The sound that we hear on the drum is the sound of the heartbeat of God's creation of Mother Earth. So because we are all listening to that same heartbeat, we are one. We are all truly, truly We are all humanity together. God created each and every one of us in the image of God. And so we can take a mirror, and if we were to hold the mirror up and look into the mirror, what we would see would be just an array of different faces. Because that is the image of God. All of us, in our differences, as well as in our our similarities. It's such an important thing for us to remember as disciples. Above and beyond all the things that we remember and we hold dear, the one thing that we do hold dear, most dearest of all, we just recently celebrated the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In a few weeks, we're going to be celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit arrived on Pentecost, the Spirit brought understanding to people of all nationalities, people that came from the north, the south, the east, the west. That was God encompassing all of humanity. That was God sharing with all of us that salvation is offered to all. It's offered to me, to you, to all of our neighbors and our friends, but it's up to us to do the work to share the good news with all of those around us. In the weeks ahead, I hope and I pray that you are able to connect with not just Native American brothers and sisters, but but people everywhere, because we're all humanity. And I want you to know that there are over 100,000 people of Native American descent. If you are tuning in from a Minnesota community, 
There are people of native descent who are living in your community. Stop and think about how you can reach them. How can you share the love of Jesus Christ with them? Amen. Uju Niji. My name is Pastor Guy Sadursky. I pastor West Bethel United Methodist Church and Spirit River United Methodist Church. Please join me together as we pray. Together, let us pray for the people of those watching and listening, for those who suffer and those in trouble, for the concerns of our local community, for the world, its people, and its leaders, for the earth you have given to our care, for the church, its leaders, its members, and its mission. In communion with the saints, great spirit, give us hearts to understand never to take from creation's beauty more than we give, never to destroy, want only for the furtherance of good, never to deny, to give our hands for the building of earth's beauty, never to take from her what we cannot use. Give us hearts to understand that to destroy earth's music is in create is to create confusion that to wreck her appearance is to blind us to its beauty that to callously pollute her fragrance is to make a house of stench that as we care for her she will care for us give us hearts to understand we have forgiven who we are we have thoughts we have sought only our own security. We have exploited simply for our own ends. We have distorted our knowledge. We have abused our power. Great spirit whose dry lands thirst, help us to find the way to refresh your lands. Great spirit whose waters are choked with debris and pollution, help us to find the way to cleanse your waters. Great Spirit, whose beautiful earth grows ugly with misuse, help us to find the way to restore beauty to your handiwork. Great Spirit, whose create creatures are being destroyed, help us to find a way to replenish them. Great Spirit, whose gifts to us bring lost in selfishness and corruption. Help us to find the way to restore our humanity. Earth, teach me quiet as the grasses are still with new light. Earth, teach me suffering as old stories suffer, stones suffer with memory. Earth, touch me humility as blossoms are humble with beginning. Earth, teach me caring, as mothers nurture their young. Earth, teach me courage, as the tree that stands alone. Earth, teach me no limitation, as, as the ant that creates, or that crawls on the ground. Earth, teach me freedom, as the eagle that soars in the sky. Earth, teach me acceptance as the leaves that die each fall. Earth, teach me renewal as the seed that rises in the spring. Earth, teach me to forget myself as melted snow forgets its life. Earth, teach me to remember kindness as dry fields weep with rain. Lord, we ask that you touch those that hear this, that they understand that we, as a native people, can show part of our culture, but also realize that we serve a creator, a God, a Lord. We ask blessings on people that need prayer, that need your love, that need your Holy Spirit. We ask this in your name. Lord God, 
great spirit, let us never forget all that you do for us daily. Sustain us with the hope of salvation and the other countless blessings you provide with your continuous presence in our lives. Lead us to live our life in testimony to your incredible blessings that you, your love may be known and experienced by all those we serve. In Jesus' name, aho. Ha mataki api, washichu i a William Kenrardi i maki api do. Bede o te atunwe i maka ga do. Damakota shni. Hello my relatives, my name is Bill Kenrardi. My wife Julie and I have our lives in the Bedote region in Dakota country. My language teachers Neil and Monica McKay are much better teachers than I am a student. Truth is, I am not Dakota. Yet any day that I speak Dakota in Dakota country is a better day than the days I don't. I find that as a United Methodist, making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world includes considering carefully what it means to be welcoming, provide for safety needs, and elicit a sense of belonging to those we live with and meet in the world. As I think about living as guests with our Dakota hosts, our Ojibwe hosts, Throughout the Dakota-Minnesota conferences, I ask you to think about what Anita Phillips reminded us of when she asked about how we are as we walk the spirit walk with our native sisters and brothers. I am charged with asking you to give generously today. I would ask that you keep Native American ministries in mind throughout the year as well. Give generously today, making special note of Native American ministries. Think about being a good guest every day and consider your commitment to acts of repentance as individuals, as local churches, in our districts and conferences. Language revitalization, cultural support, returning sacred objects and remains are all needed. For additional ways to support throughout the year, connect with the Committee on Native American Ministries and we thank you for all your support and considerations as we walk this spirit walk together. Miigwech, Wopadetanka. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Creator, Great Spirit, we lift our hearts and praises for the gift of creation. You made us in your image and placed us amidst your wonderful works, asking only that we care and love all as neighbor and neighbor as self. Everything we need, you provide. We offer these gifts with deep gratitude for all that we have received. May they be used to bring justice and healing and wholeness, that we may again know oneness of creation. Amen.
before us, it is blessed. Behind us, it is blessed. Below us, it is blessed. Above us, it is blessed. Around us, it is blessed. As we set out with Creator. Our speech is blessed as we set out for our Creator. With beauty before me, with beauty behind me, with beauty below me, with beauty above me, with beauty around me, I set out for a holy place indeed. Aho. Go in peace to share the light and the love of Jesus Christ with the world. Aho. Mm -hmm.